are going with our series on the seven spirits of God and actually this is the last week of the seventh spirit which is the spirit of the fear of the Lord and um, and uh, it is very precious to the Lord's sight and why it's so because he has spoken in his word everything we say must be lining up with the scripture everything we pray must lining up with the scriptures because the scriptures is the will of God our feelings emotions are passing away very fast like the blowing of the wind but the word of God is the same yesterday today and forever his will is the same yesterday today and forever and uh, and to stay focused on his will is to gain inconsistent strength and you will grow from glory to glory from strength to strength why is it the early patriarch the apostles were strong Moses was strong in 120 years of age he was stronger than he began on the age of 40 Joshua and Caleb in the 80s, 85 years, he was as much strong in the age of 80, 85, as they were at 40. Why is it the strength didn't wear out? Why is it the early apostles live 100 plus years? Because even though they didn't have the Bible, they didn't have written word, but they have God directly speaking to them, either through the prophets, who were the voice of God, extended voice of God through the oracle, or through the writing of the scrolls, that the rabbis cannot resign during the Shabbat in the synagogues, so they can only have access to the written word of God through the synagogues. Of your finger, moving of your finger, this is the early apostles and, and the patriarch, they were dreaming of something like this. Daniel saw it in prophecies. And he prophesied about the increasing of the knowledge. The knowledge we have is just all the information you want is just click and there you are. And yet are people dying out of ignorance. People are more sick today than ever before. People are perishing without lack of knowledge. People giving themselves to the pharmaceutical for, 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 for the, through the drugs to fix the problem where the Word of God is always available. Where the, where the Word of God is always the same. Where the Spirit of God is always willing and, and helpful to revitalize our life and to strengthen our lives to walk by the Spirit of God so in Isaiah chapter 11 I love this Isaiah 11 uh, for the sake of time you do your homework you read and meditate this week on Isaiah 11 God will speak a lot to you because Isaiah 11 is the root of everything is a root, root of Jesse which is the father also of David the lineage from the tribe of Judah that Jesus came so it is very important for us in the last days especially to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God to be rooted and grounded in the truth of God to go deeper deeper to the roots that the root is Christ, that the root is God himself. And out of that roots, well, all the branches are binding in the vine, in the root, springing forth, living water, life, juices, energy, healing, everything, our daily bread, and everything what we need. There's a fresh love for the word of God I don't know about your life, but in my life, in 
this season like never before. I am being glued to the Word of God, but not only to the heights, but depths of the Word of God. Depths. And this week I was looking through the Isaiah scrolls and, and, and how I just tried to picturize how it all comes together, how the wonderful prophets without this mighty technology that we have today and yet they can uh, uh, they can they can resign the 66 books on the scrolls that was discovered in Israel uh, and they unveil it and it's exactly what we have the scriptures today it is amazing how the Holy Spirit can navigate and lead us where we align ourselves and I was looking to the rabbis the scribes this week how they write the scriptures and they miss the portion of the scriptures that concerning the name of the most high God because they they have to prepare themselves they went to the ritual bath and every time they resign and they make public to the people that they will write the name of the Holy God in the scriptures there was a fear of the Lord in the scribes, the early scribes of the Lord. There was a fear of the Lord in the teachers of Torah. There was a fear of the Lord in the students. There was a fear of the Lord and deep reverence for the Word of God, for the Scriptures, for Torah, for the written Word of God and spoken Word of God. There was a fear of the Lord in the hearts of the early apostles and prophets and the students as well who were sitting under the teachers of the prophets and, and, and while I look at the backgrounds it makes me appreciate that they even died for the cause of writing the, the scriptures that they're willing to be burned alive even and stoned by Roman different empires that was coming in and they were not loving their lives they lay their lives for really what they believe the Word of God so you can see that the fear of the Lord was stronger in them not to loving their lives and the reverend towards the Word of God Jesus is the word. So Isaiah 11 says, There shall come forth a rock from the stem of Jesse. Jesse, we know, is a father of David. A branch shall grow out of his roots. A branch is Jesus. And it is mercy of God, nothing else, that we as the Gentiles, not Jews, Gentiles, who have been crafted in, through that branch who is called Christ from the tribe of Judah to the olive tree to the commonwealth of inheritance of God Almighty and his kingdom as a one new man Jew and Gentile rejoicing together in one new man Christ the root that spring up that become a branch the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and mind or power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, his, his delight is in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with a quid for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked the righteous shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist amen I stop here uh, faithfulness why the faithfulness 
the birth of truth. Paul the Apostle described to the Ephesians chapter 6, the full armor of God. One week we will cover that. And one, if God will lead us, we will also go deeper into the seven spirits of God that they representing also the seven attributes and the characteristic of God. God's name is imprinted in the spirit of the fear of the Lord and in seven four spirits. Because God is the spirit. This is his characteristic, who he is. And uh, we just touched in the previous week, uh, weeks, about one of his attributes, which is the spirit of mind, which representing his name, El Gibal, who he is. So let us go deep into the spirit of the fear of the Lord. When you, when you look into your own congregation back in your hometown, when I was a small boy, even though I grew up with a very religious uh, household, especially my mother, my, grand, my grandma, and uh, the uncle not really, the father not really, and uh, none of them working uh, hard for, for the Lord. So the life I never changed. The life I never transformed. They were just hearing and they were just going out and live the same they can. But it was not like with my mother, who was mother of faith, and my grandmother. Really, that would keep them going. Even though we were going through hard winter, minus 40 or minus 45, they would go for miles on their foot to the church, to the congregation where they're going. Because they feel the Spirit of God. There was a, there, there was a move that... that that imparted to them the word of God that will keep them going through the next week in the hardship of the communism, in the hardship of the after World War I, after World War II, wars after wars, devastation and death everywhere, the word of God and the faith in God's word will keep them going. We cannot imagine yourself because you live in this comfortable boat with air condition and all the comfort around you we cannot imagine the the effects of of wars i cannot even i just resigned from all the stories that my grand grand grandmother was telling me grandfather was telling me it was a miracle survivor but the faith in god will keep them going to don't giving up don't quit it even though there was a death of the loved ones left and right, the faith was keeping them going. And the faith was enduring. In this generation of the uh, nothingness just coming like really instant everything, instant noodles, instant McDonald's, instant KFC, everything, everything instant. People are get agitated when they have to wait. And the Spirit of God says, wait upon the Lord. People don't know how to wait. I don't go to that subject today. Just wait upon the Lord to renew the strength. To exchange the strength. Actually, the Bible talks about in the Hebrew, uh, in Isaiah 40. Exchange the strength. While we are waiting, we are not passive. What is happening is a negotiation with heaven. It's exchange taking place. We, we, we're giving Him our weaknesses and He filling us with the spirit of strength, spirit of mind. There's exchange, there's endurance. So this, what is the spirit of the Lord? Because when I'm looking, especially the Western churches, I don't see any fear of the Lord. They just, they, they, they treat God as, as God is in the box of one of their religion. There's no reverence. But it's not so in the church. That is why God is restoring and God delight in the people who fear the Lord. And, and what is the spirit of the fear of the Lord? What is going in your mind when you're thinking about the fear of the Lord? We're hearing this term, fear of the Lord. Yeah, you got a fear of the Lord. But what is it? How I get the spirit of the fear of the Lord energized my heart to live holy? How I align myself to the spirit of the Lord to fill me to the brim, to shut up all the occurrences, uh, all the appearances of evil. 
How I align myself in the spirit of the fear of the Lord that will keep me away from sin. That will keep me away from making mistakes. That will keep me away and give me discernment for keep me away from the people that come with the wrong motivation of the hearts. That's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We allow you to, to know that you know and sure that you sure would you can discern the person heart. And if the knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord are working together, and you always, as we went for past weeks, you can see that every spirit that we cover, the Jewish, the Jewish roots of that one spirit is combined always with two words. The roots of the Hebrew. And that word in the Hebrew is combined with two words. The spirit of the fear of the Lord is Yah. Yah, 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 right. It's, it's it, the, the word of Yahweh. It comes from that aspect, reverent to God, and Jirach. It's like a Jara, Jirach, Jara, Jirach. So combine those words that is God, the fear of the Lord, provide the fear of the Lord to come to Him, to address Him properly the way He designed. You see, we, that is why we have to humble ourselves on the mighty hand and come in humility and humbleness and meek spirit that I am nothing, I'm just a dirt, I'm just a dust from the ground that you just put into your hands and you, you fashion at me and you breathe the breath of life in me. I was just a dirt. But it is healthy fear. It is healthy fear. It is good fear. It, is, it means fearful reverence. So many, he, you can hear reverend so and so, reverend this, reverend that. Why they grab the titles that belongs to God? The only one thing in the Bible, it, reverend, is combined to the word of God that God is reverend, reverend God. And yet men grabbing the title of God and stick on the reverend so and so, reverend this, reverend that. I don't know, one day the Lord will deal with all those things. Judgment is in his hands. So reverence, reverend God, reverence, reverend, afraid, exceedingly afraid, fear, terror, combined with the words, fearing, awesome, terrifying thing, fear of God, respect, reverence, pity, oh, Greek word, it's uh, also, uh, one combined with two words. One is a phobia. That is why you get a phobia. One of those words, phobia. And the second one is eulebia, translated as godly fear. Reverence towards God. Godly fear. That is why when Jesus coming back, he looking for the people who will have faith on the earth. Faith is not as many things. Not many people understand faith. One day you may ask Pastor Sheila to give us a message about faith. She had the best message about faith that I ever hear. Faith, godly fear, godly fear. And we will look through the scriptures. It is healthy fear. It is not demonic fear. Demonic fear have anxiety. Suddenly all your system being shut down. Suddenly the faith being paralyzed. Because the fear paralyzed. Is fear, fear, unhealthy fear. Demonic fear will, will paralyze and now the voice of God. That you cannot hear and obey His voice. And many times we are in a situation like the disciples were in the raging storm of the sea. Jesus was all along with them on the boat, sleeping on the pillow. He was resting in the Father's will. He was resting in His presence. He was continually in charge of everything. But the devil slipped in, he can 
disturb days and take that opportunity as he's sleeping through his disciples who were terrified. They were crying out. They were crying in fear, in anxiety. They were tormented. They were paralyzed. They wake up. Oh, wait, Jesus is Jesus. Are you not care that we are perishing? Are you not taking notice? He rose, rebuked the storm. He says, where is your faith? They were so fearful, afraid to die, afraid for their lives. But the Bible says in uh, Revelation 12, 11, we overcame them by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and we don't love our lives. If you, we love our lives so much, the, the unhealthy Satan fear will paralyze us from obeying God. It was what happened the second time where the disciples on the, was on the boat. They were commissioned to go to the other side. And uh, Jesus went to have a heart to heart, face to face with Papa Yahweh. And as he was walking through, he about to pass them by. And they cry out, if they thought it's a ghost. And Peter stepped out of the boat. And he cried out, he says, if you, if you did this, you let me come to you in the water. Jesus says, come. So he stepped out. Other, others. They all have the same opportunity, but the other 11 were so fearful, they were fearful for their life. But Peter, you know, he blasted out, of course, on the day of Pentecost, he was new man. But thank God, with the little faith that he had, he stepped out with the little fear of the Lord that he had in his heart. He gave back to Jesus the little he had, and Jesus is come, and he started walking on the water. So it is the godly fear. The Lord's fear leads to accountability. You know this word is very, uh, not very popular. I never hear in my life in the church to be honest. Um, I just study this word. And uh, doing the studies. Every one of us will give the account of himself of everything what we are doing what we are thinking what we are speaking our action and motivation there is a accountability of everything and uh, the lord says the faithful servant and the evil servant he give us the from uh, luke 12 through 35 to 48 the parable of the faithful servant and the wicked servant, the evil one. So in, the, in this parable, he's describing us two types of people. The, the one who have the fear of the Lord, who obey with little they have, and the one who have, but the fear of Satan paralyzed them of losing and not uh, exercises what they need to, to bear them and, uh, underneath and not being using of these gifts. That's the accountability. Jesus, the Almighty God, he have uh, more angels with him than our opposer. And they have all different jobs of making carefully accounts of us. That is why there will be books, there are many books in the Bible, and there are books that will be brought up in the Day of Judgment where we can come, where he can see exactly what was happening. So it is very important that accountability going back to the church. That little that God commissioned us in his service, we must be very faithful in the little that he has committed us. Don't look to the left or don't look to the right. Don't don't cover just as someone else's gifts or someone else's ministries. Don't criticize. Don't use this time and energy to focus and do your work with all of your heart, sacrificially, willing heart unto the Lord. And whatever it is done in His service, He will multiply. He will grow up from that. It will grow up, it will multiply, it will spread out to other branches and we're bearing much fruits. Some 30%, some 60, some 100. So it is about our uh, accountability. Moses 
have the fear of the Lord inside of him. At the age of 80, he already was trained with the best Egyptian university. He already had all the PhD, doctor degree, everything what you imagine, immeasurable, more than that, because under the, the royal family, that he have more than other uh, doctor's degrees. He have all the world under his feet at the age of 40. And he had this privilege growing up in the Pharaoh's household. So he was eating and feasting among the Pharaoh's household. He had the best of the best. But he didn't have the fear of the Lord. He knew deep inside of him that he was, he had a call. But he was not maturing and grow and release in that call. So he tried to get up the matter at the age of 40 by himself, doesn't, which was, doesn't work, and he left mass, he ran for his life, and we know that he has to get next 40 years wilderness training in the back of the desert until on the age of 18, he graduated to enter into God's university, which is with the Spirit of the Lord. So in Exodus 3, he was beheld in the burning bush, the fire that was burning, and then suddenly he was identified, something inside of him, the inner spiritual man, was surpassing his natural knowledge, his natural understanding, his, his, his comprehension, and something inside of his spirit was drawing him to the source of life to the roots, to the root of life, which is God Himself, to His name, to the reverent fear of the Lord, to set everything aside. All His father-in-law business, He set aside and began to pursue and step-by-step and step walking towards that burning bush. Moses was in total awe of God. It is like what we feel when we are see something overwhelming. Something really overwhelm us that anything else is just melting away. Only when we can behold something that overwhelms us. Something that identified in our inner spiritual man that did the creator calling the creatures to come back to him. With, through the spirit of the Lord. There is an invisible uh, connection. There is an invisible signal. Even though we have all this Wi-Fi, all the signal, signals, but we cannot see with the natural eyes. And yet all this powerpoint, everything connected with invisible. Invisible signal that's going on. Invisible frequency that's going on. And now God Himself, invisible God, revealing through the frequency of the spirit of the fear of the Lord and, and activating Moses to his calling, to his calling that has been dormant for 80 years. Many people sitting all of their lives in the church and when you ask them, what is Mark, what is your calling? I don't know. My pastor know. <laughs> Maybe my sales leader will know. I don't know. Something wrong. Ch church is a place of training. Church is a place of equipping the saints. Pray. Church is a place of providing the platform of equipping the saints. Activating the saints for the work of the ministry. Church is a place of equipping the fivefold, the apostle, prophet, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers, and, and then also ninefold in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and, uh, and, and Ephesians 4, 11. Church is a church of equipping and training to maturing the believers to the full measure of the statue of Christ. It's a training equipping centers. It's, it, 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 it is not institution. Church is not institution. Church is a living hope of the world. And that church is inside every, each of us as a living stones. Part of the body of one another. That is why we are calling the body of Christ. 
And we have only one head. That head is Christ. Problem with the church that they have many heads. Can you imagine your body has many heads? That would be a monster. That would be terrible. Which head should I listen? And you listen this head, that head, that head. And then you're confused more than, than, than you was found. I believe you hear the opinion of all the heads. And all the politicians that are going on politics. Leave them alone. Focus on one head, which is Christ. Christ is the head of the church, beloved. Christ. Look into Christ and stay focused on Christ. Because while you are staying focused from Christ, what is taking place is a spiritual exchange. The, 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 the focus will give you power. The focus will give you strength to fulfill the calling that you have. Just like the marathon runner. I, I was talking uh, last week with my friend. He was running 42 kilometers. He's a, 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 he cutting hair nearby there in the corner. And uh, he went to Bolivar. There was a 42,000 marathon runner. And he was number 400. F number 400. And he says, I prepared myself for years to run this marathon. It's not easy, 42. He says, you can do too. Can you go with me next year? Can you go with me after three months? I said, hold on. I never run the 42 kilometers. I have run three kilometers, you know, five. And so it's a time of preparation. There's a time of setting apart. There's a time of focus. There's a time of training. You need to train, 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 train. This is what the church is. To be a training ground for activating the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The church is a training ground to growing and maturing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The church is a place to, to uh, maturing the fire for ministries, activating and find them and release them according to the callings in the body. You know how many bones we have? We have 208 bones. Women have 208 bones, men have 207 bones. Why is it like this? Because God took from Adam and stuck one more into Eve. Created out of that bone. You didn't know that. And we have three trillion cells in our bodies. So Paul the Apostle understands that we are the body of Christ. And every joint through the ligaments of love, love one another, coming together with our life. That is why Jesus was sent by God to bring us new command. New command I give unto you, love one another. So there is God with God who is love, manifesting himself to about three, thousand, three million people on Mount Sinai. All the people in the camp trembling with fear. Because God is holy. And those that have come to him must be holy. So God said to his people, I cannot manifest myself to you today because I am holy. My holiness coming to you, it will be a result of your death. Because of your sins. Because of your rebellions. So I give you three days to prepare yourself, clean yourself, prepare your heart, prepare your robes, clean yourself, prepare yourself to meet your God. And Moses says, praise God, my job will be finished from now on. That all 3,000 people have direction. The 3 million people will, will, can, uh, can have direct relationship with God face to face, heart to heart. That he can speak to them and I will be saved from all the troubles. <laughs> you think that was the case? No. When God came as a thunder, he says, then it came to pass on the third day, the resurrection day. In the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet, it's like a Pentecost, isn't it? Was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. This fear is not about being afraid, but rather about understanding the old, uh, wonderful, majesty, mighty, Godly fear of the Lord and dominion of Almighty God. So you understand now the fear of the Lord, the heart of God. 
and unfaithfulness of, God, of people and rebellious in the hearts. That they were not give, willing to give it up. They ate Egypt. They're not willing to give it up the old lifestyle. They're not willing to give it up the garlic and, and whatever they have from Egypt. You know, they are not willing to lay down the small toys. To pick up the big toy of the kingdom of God. And the calling of the fear of the Lord. Where all begins? In the Garden of Eden. The people were afraid of God's presence. Can you imagine the loving father? Can you imagine the baby growing up and looking to the father and mother? I'm afraid of you. I don't want to get close to you or unsafe for me. It, is a, it will be a toxic relationship, isn't it? It's natural. This is how God connects us. Can you imagine your daughter, your son coming and, and look at you, 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 you know, you are full of fear, but something else is on you, not the fear of love, the fear of the Lord, not of love. You're shutting them away. You're keeping them further away. And you're pushing them actually by your action to the mouth of the devil. You know, to the hands of Satan. This is what's happening with the world. This is what's happened with this fallen world. That is why those institutions are created for the broken families and broken homes and broken childhood and they fall into the drugs. You talk to the drug addictions. You talk to the people. I, I do talk to them because we have a back in ministry in Poland Teen Challenge. And you can talk to them. It all starts from home. It all from home. From the broken of marriage, broken relationship, abandonment of the parents, the children, and the, the war, take them out, the street, take them out, the gang, take them out. The drug addicts, take them in. Mafia, just take them in. The sin, see, it keeps us away from God. Genesis 3, 8. And they hear the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hide themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. So now Adam will now commit the high treason against God and hide himself with his wife from the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Because suddenly he lost the fear of the Lord. And the fear of Satan through the sin has entered into his heart, into his life, and pushed him further from God hide themselves. Shame come upon them. And push them away from God. This is the tactic of the enemies. Has been for 6,000 years. It's still a work. Because God's people are losing the fear of the Lord. You cannot be passive. Either we are in the spirit of the fear of the Lord or the spirit of Satan fear. One or the other. He says, I will have you hot like fire burning bush or I will have you cold dead religion. But not look warm, not the loud that see on church in the book of Revelation described. Maybe one day we can take all the seven churches and we go through one by one every week. It's a lukewarm church. Neither hot or cold. I, I like the coffee either hot or cold. I hate lukewarm. And I went to some brother home and he gave me a lukewarm tea. I don't, I tested, I don't want it. I don't want lukewarm tea. I don't want it. So India, in India, they drink the hot tea, burning hot. I try it very, very burn my tongue. And they can, just like this, <laughs> shock, I was shocked, you know. I mean, what about all those palettes, you know? You know, testing. And it numbs my whole body for, for a whole day, you know? I mean, whole mouth. And then I can taste nothing after that. <laughs> 
and you can uh, read in your home, uh, home study, respecting God's holiness in the first Corinthians chapter 13, the first four verses. So the disciples of Christ, like us, is taught about the areas of holiness. The fear of the Lord is, is, is in the area of holiness, intimacy, worship, reverence, and righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because you are in Christ and you put on Christ, you put on Christ's righteousness and you are inherited Christ's righteousness, which is the fear of the Lord. So behind the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the substance is the holiness, to make us holy as He is holy, for no one can come to Him except being holy as He is holy. And blessed are those who are holy, holy, pure in heart, for they shall see God. So this is how we see God, by being having fear of the Lord, purified. The fear of the Lord, our disciple is, is imparted to always have deep respect uh, for the Lord. And the fear of the Lord means to show Him respect in everything you say or do. Never take credit for the glory of God moving in your life. This is very dangerous. Never attribute yourself of God's glory. Don't touch God's glory. That is why God gave us the fear of the Lord that will prevent us from falling. Satan who did not, who lost the fear of the Lord. He desired God's glory to be like the one of Most High lifted on the throne and he lost from extremely high heaven to extremely low hell. He lost it all. He lost the fear of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord will keep you away from sin. Exodus, we already mentioned, Exodus 20 verse 18 through uh, 20, this entire Exodus 20 is very good because you can have so many nuggets about the fear of the Lord. Now all the people, verse 18, now all the people witness the thunderings and the lightning's flashes, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Now, the Holy Spirit just remind me, after Jesus' resurrection, thank you Holy Ghost, it was 500 people who have seen Jesus face to face, who have invitation from His mouth to enter to the fear of the Lord, with the fear of the Lord, to the upper room. And 120 with the spirit of the fear of the Lord went up into the upper room, they locked themselves and hold the promises of God. They trust that the little fear of God they have, that the fear of the Lord and the promise of God that come as a rema word from Jesus himself, from God and Jesus himself, through the word of God in Matthew, in the Luke uh, 24, 49, and you're going to the city of Jerusalem and stay there until you endure with the power, receive the promise of God, and they went up into the upper room and 120 were waiting there. But what about the other 380? The enemy will always attack and, and cause the people to lose the focus, to lose the fear of the Lord, and to do something else than, than what the 120 did. Uh, verse 20, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come to test you. There's a testing. We don't like tests sometimes. Really, we don't like tests. But actually, in the test, you are growing. Every teacher tests us because they have to see what we have learned. You know, I'm still studying. I do my studies and I have weekly tests, quiz and tests, because they have to see me every week how I am growing. How I'm growing. 
And, and then I can see myself if I have grown this week more than last week. If I didn't grow this week, then I mean I have, I'm backsliding. I'm drawing back. I'm losing the focus. I'm losing the fear of the Lord. I'm losing the progressive uh, way of the Lord that takes me from glory to glory, from faith to faith. I'm losing on the first love. And then that is why it's very important to, to do the checkup, to have a spiritual checkup. The reason why people sin is because they don't respect God. Look at the media today, look at the Hollywood and all the, the movies are loaded with the cursing God and using the name which is above every name without the fear of the Lord but with the fear of Satan to be his ambassadors and to curse the name of the Most High and using as a, as a, as a this dishonor all over movies, you know, in Hollywood there. So God's gonna clean up that mess. They don't gonna think they're gonna run away with all the sins and curses all of the life. God's gonna clean up the mess with fire. He's coming back to clean up. First time he come with the water. The second one, he's coming with the fire to clean up the mess. To establish his new king, new heaven and new earth and kingdom, millennium kingdom for a thousand years. So uh, D.L. Moody have a nice uh, saying. He called this, the Bible will keep you from sin. Or sin will keep you from the Bible. Is it not true? I was meditating this morning about that. You know, we love the Bible. We have this love relationship with the Bible. This is a love letter, the Bible, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, including the cover and maps. They're all good, you know. And, uh, and then, as soon as you draw on the Bible, Especially, the, I love the paper, you know, I don't like the electronic, I love the old style. I love the scrub because I can put my note, I can put my hand, I can, I don't have any messages slipping in, I don't have any calls. I just have time with the Lord. And I love the Bible, I love the paper, I don't know, maybe I'm updated, I don't know, but uh, you know, I really love to touch, you know, to touch the Bible and I love to weep and put my tear there, this is my, you know. And I love to make a mark, this is mine, this is personal, this is love letter to Papa God to me. He's speaking to me and he's imparting to me the fear of the Lord. And when I'm going through the dark valleys, I'm going back to that word of oh, Father, we thank you. You know, you, your word didn't change. You know, uh, my feeling change. You know, my maybe situation kind of circumstances running the other side. But never mind, uh, I look into to the, to the word of God and I'm being transformed and I'm being shifted, you know, to the... To the spirit realm, not to the flesh, not to the soulish, but to the spirit realm, because we are spirit, God is spirit. So I'm being shifted to God's side. And when you are on God's side, you are on the victorious side. When you are in the fear of the Lord, then you are on the victorious side. This is what's happened with the uh, with early apostles and the disciples of Jesus. So let us look to the to Jesus Himself. What is the uh, the combination? Be, uh, of the uh, uh, reverencing fear of the Lord, the reverencing fear of the Lord and the love of God. They are all connected. The love and the fear of the Lord are connected together. Because God is love and God is the Spirit, right? So the, it, it, it is called the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. So now you have a combination and God is love and God is the Spirit. So now it is about godly fear, which uh, Hebrew chapter 5 from verse 7 and 8 described this all five chapter is very good who, is, who talk about Jesus in the days of his flesh when he has offered up prayers and supplications with various cries and tears to him who is able to save him from death and was here because of his godly fear now you can see in the life of Jesus the spirit of the fear of the Lord is called godly fear. Verse 8. Though he was a son, he didn't commit any sin, any mistake. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. This is how we learn obedience. The, ch the, the children that are chastised. That's a proof that God loves us. If God spank us, that's been thank you God for loving me. 
the caring about me to keep me uh, uh, in the right path in the spirit of the fear of the Lord and that godly fear will keep you in the will of God in the purpose of God so it is reverential, it is respectful fear that is born out of love. You love for him, your love for him is the reason why you respect him. You respect Abba Yahweh because you love him. There's no other mot alternative motivation. You do what you are doing because you love him. And you speak what you are speaking because you love Him. And you share it, what you are having, because you love Him. And you want that love that He imparted to you to be imparted to as many people as possible. Because it is that love that draws men and the goodness of God into repentance. So let us look deep into the function and the operation of the fear of the Lord. It is providing, the fear of the Lord providing guidance in every aspect of our life. It produces a reverent and holy fear of God with the ability to discern man. So now we have many situations, many decisions to make, and now it is not about leaning on our own understanding, Proverbs 3, uh, verse 5 and 6, but acknowledge Him with the fear of the Lord in every decision, in even the smallest details. Acknowledge Him, and this is the signal for Him that you love Him because you get Him involved in every area of your life seven days a week every day 24 hours get him involved in every area whatever you do you're cooking you're driving everything you answering the messages whatever you do you you're sharing you're teaching you're preaching you're evangelizing you're sharing the gospel whatever you do you're praying for the sick you're doing this out of reverence for the lord your motivation is love because god is love and he make us in his image. Now, this is a, some sad story that has been crept into the church. And in, even in the early first century church. You can read it in Acts chapter 5. The manifestation of the fear of the knowledge and of the fear of the Lord in the life of the apostle Peter. We know the Ananias and Sapphira story that they sell the property. Most of the churches will accept them because they, they are givers to the church. Wow, they give a lot, you know, praise the Lord. But people, but you know, but not the early apostles who walk with God, who have reverential respect to the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, they are able to have a supernatural spirit of knowledge to discern the motivation of the hearts of the couple. That they want to buy the church buy the place in the church. They want to buy through the leadership on the throne row. They want to be a team among the core teams of the early apostles that, 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 that Jesus raised up. And the Spirit of God discerned them through the life of Peter. I have once have seen something like this. 2017. I have seen this situation in Jerusalem. We gathered the, uh, there was an event, the leaders of, all the leaders from many other nations were there. There was a small, uh, like an auditorium, maybe about 700 people, no more than 1,000, six to 700 people. And uh, the, the, the event was welcoming the king, the, the king of glory to the city of Jerusalem. It was soaking prayer and intercession and fasting. The Jew, the, the Jewish, uh, Messianic Jew, the Jewish and the Arabs and, and the uh, different leaders from different streams of the prayer movements come together in, in, in consistent prayer and fasting and they, they birth this, this welcome the King of Glory. And well, the ark, while the worship was going on, 
the Ark of a Covenant was coming. The Ark of a Covenant was coming to the platform. There was a holy reference. People was just bowing their knees and, and just reverent worship the Lord. There was a holy reverence of the Lord. There was a fear of the Lord that was coming to the church of God. One new man during that time. And I was in the front of the stage with the other leaders there. And I'm watching. I described this in my book. I'm watching this. The holy fear of the Lord came. People will just uh, come up from the church and just bow and prostrate before the Lord. And the repentance can take place. It was, it was a glorious moment. You don't see this every day. And when the, the Spirit of God hovered the worshipers, one brother with the guitar in the back of the platform suddenly fall dead. And uh, there was a commotion among them, but the, the leaders was very mature just to uh, going deep into the worship. He just fall dead. And they take him out, they carry him dead, and laid him aside, and the event was going on. The event was going on. Everything was going on. And then after that, investigate what was happening with him. What's happening, he come from uh, some of those islands in Pacific. Some in Pacific, your region somewhere there, New Zealand, Australia, islands, somewhere there. And he told me, the, the, the leader told me that he as a pastor warned him of his immorality, of his life, to repent of his sin. He rejected. Then together the elders as well of the church, they warned him as well. He just regard because he based on the talent and he's very talented, musical, but no fear of the Lord. He live unclean life. Then after that, other international prophets rebuke him also to repent. He just refused. Every time to repent, refuse. So when the, the fear of the Lord came, the knowledge, the glory of God came, that's a time of judgment. That's a time of judgment come upon him and he was just dropped dead and died prematurely, carrying him away. So this is what's happened in the early church and this is what the fear of the Lord, that's a sign, it was a sign for us that the fear of the Lord is coming back to church. Since 2017. So what brings the fear of the Lord? Knowledge. Revelation, uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools, you see, despise wisdom and instructions. The fear of the Lord brings understanding. Proverbs 9 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Job 28, 28, 8 says, and to man, he says, Behold, the fear of the Lord, what is wisdom? And depths, and depart from evil is understanding. The fear, uh, Proverbs 19, 23 says, The fear of the Lord leads to life. Life. Man just pay with death because he shunned the fear of the Lord. He pushed back the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests calm, content, untouched by trouble. Untouched by trouble. Because of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. 